Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the Because I Love You podcast where I tell you everything a best friend should because I love you. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that like this is the new Gen Z heart. Do you see it? My sister is 16 and I had to ask her what it is. I think that's so cute, but I thought it was like cha-ching, like I have money. Anyways, you didn't come here for that. <laughs> so hormone disruptors. Okay, let's get into it. You guys seem to really like the wellness content, which I'm so geeked about because I honestly could talk about it forever. My journey with my own wellness and fitness and health has been just honestly like a crazy journey. As a woman, I've realized just how dismissive some caretakers and healthcare professionals can be and it's really disheartening. I definitely am excited to use my platform to tell you what's worked for me. Of course, I'm not giving you advice, but as a community, talking obviously helps and anything that I say in this video, run it by your own health professionals, doctors, whoever you're working with. But sometimes it's nice to just hear that there are options. <laughs> Hormones are obviously a huge thing for women. I think we really need to lean into prioritizing hormone health and hormone balance. It really is so essential to women. We're such fluctuating beings and we're cyclical every month. We literally have cycles. I don't know why we're not taught how to better care for ourselves. And honestly, TikTok has been amazing for that reason. Shout out TikTok. This is where most of my curiosity began. So in terms of my situation, with hormone health. There was a point where I was going to the doctor and I was like, hey, can you guys like test my hormones? And it was pretty much dismissed because I'm young and I should be fine. You know, I have zero tolerance for that. I need doctors who are my advocates and I'm so grateful now that I finally have a team of doctors who they're like, what do you want? What do you wanna do? Like, let's do that. That's how it needs to be. So yeah, I had asked for like a hormone panel before and they were basically like, no, like you don't need that. But I ended up finding a holistic doctor, a naturopathic doctor. I've talked about this before. This is just like alternative medicine. So it's not everybody's cup of tea. With naturopathic practices and holistic practices, they don't look to give you medication. They look to help you heal the root cause of your situation. When you work with a naturopathic doctor, you can expect to be paying a lot of money because it's not covered by insurance. I wonder why that is. And it might take you a while to get to the root cause, but I see it as, okay, I'm finally getting to the root cause to where I won't have to continue getting medication after medication for whatever issue it is. So it is kind of a commitment and it's an investment, but your health, baby, I'll spend the money on my health okay that's the thing about me if you are feeling anxious depressed if you don't have much of a libido if you're moody if you're irritable if your hunger cues are out of control and you can't stop eating or maybe you can't eat at all your hormones might be the reason for that and you are entitled to understanding what's going on with your hormones no doctor should be withholding your right to information around your body period i said okay fuck the doctor then i'm going to a naturopathic doctor and the first thing they said immediately was okay let's get you a hormone test because we want answers <laughs> duh we did what's called an hu map and i also took a dutch test there's hormones that they test in both of those and then one of them i can't remember which one focuses more on neurotransmitters so like the brain and both of those tests were very telling. They were just urine samples. And with my hormones at that time, I knew I was in a bad place. But to actually get my test results was, you know, it made sense what I was seeing. Essentially, my hormone test came back. These were her words, not mine. She said, it looks like you are premenopausal. Mm -hmm. Now for context, I had just come off this birth control and it was gnarly coming off of that birth control. It like fucked me up, okay, for lack of better words. I will never take birth control again. And I'm not advocating for that. Like you do you, it's your body, but I will never take the pill again. I've said this before. I'm so serious. Like there's just nothing that would make me do that again because what I had to deal with when I came off of it was just so not worth it. Mm -mm, girl, they had me feeling like I was going crazy. <laughs> yeah, my hormone 
panel came back, it didn't look great. Basically, we came to the conclusion that my body was just trying to regulate after coming off of birth control. Mind you, I was on the pill for a year. I just got on it around my wedding. It really had an impact on me and it took me probably a year and a half to get back to normal. Now, prior to the pill, listen, my period was very regular. I didn't have issues with my hormones. I felt very energized, like libido great, mood great. Like I felt like a normal person. It wasn't until I came off the pill that I had all these issues. It seemed like according to the results I had with my hormone panel that they my hormones were like mimicking the pill. Like, oh, aren't we supposed to be not trying to have a baby? So it was giving premenopausal. Like we shouldn't give this girl a period because she didn't want a period. So like, let's not give it back. <laughs> you know, that's kind of how I felt. I was like, wait, why are my hormones playing in my face? You know, but the testing, I got answers. Knowledge is power. To have power is to have autonomy over your body. You deserve those answers. Point blank period. I'm not trying to fucking play blue skidoo with my body. What I was finding with going to the doctor and being like, listen, like I'm a moody bitch. I'm hungry all the time. I literally want to fight my husband right now. Can you help me? Like, why am I going crazy? They're like, well, let's put you on more birth control. <laughs> no, the fuck? It literally just pisses me off. I'm sorry. Like I get very, very just triggered by this whole conversation of let's give you more birth control. No, can we fix me? Can we fix it? That meant, yeah, this was going to be uncomfortable for me because I didn't go that route. I was like, no, fuck that. I know why. Intuitively, I knew that this was just kind of the bounce back effect of coming off the pill. But in the midst of it, it's like, am I ever going to be normal again? So it's incredibly frustrating. And, you know, I was just dealing with a lot of issues at the time. Anyways, child, we got the results and from there, we were able to start making changes. I started with my lifestyle. Food was a big part of it. I wasn't going to continue to eat things that just didn't support me or I was going to eat a lot less of them. So I really changed up how I ate. More whole foods is the bottom line. Stop eating out so much period. Drinking needed to cut back on it. It wasn't helping. Honestly, alcohol was like the worst thing I could put in my body because I don't know what was like how it interacted with me. But during that time, drinking was like war on myself. So I, I just like couldn't even drink. But anyways, I got a nutritionist at the time and she was a great help in teaching me like how to support my hormones naturally. I realized in that process that I was making a lot of mistakes that I didn't know I was doing. And that's what I really want to get into with you guys today. The things that maybe you shouldn't do as much of if you want to focus on having the balanced hormones. And these are things that don't require medication or anything. So let's get into it. I was accidentally doing things that were disrupting my hormones. So I will say in my case, I think the pill was like obviously the culprit and my body was just trying to regulate, but there were things in my life that I definitely could change to help myself at the time. So one of those things is I had to get back with eating breakfast. I was kind of just like not really into the idea of always having a, a balanced breakfast, but think about it. I mean, the way that you start your day is how your day is going to go. In terms of building my breakfast, it had about 30 grams of protein. That's what my nutritionist recommended for me. I also had some berries in the morning and that was kind of like the boxes I needed to check. It really wasn't that complicated. Just try to get some berries in. We chose berries because we were also focusing on insulin and blood sugar and berries just like don't spike your blood sugar a lot at all. They're great for you. Antioxidants, all that stuff. So I would have berries and then I would have 30 grams of protein in some form or fashion. And I would try to do that through whole food options. So eggs were my thing at the time. I don't eat eggs anymore because I found out they make me constipated. <laughs> now I just do like this Trader Joe's chicken sausage patty thing. It has very simple ingredients and no like weird shit in it. And two of those patties or three of those patties are like all I need for protein. So I have that with some fruit every morning and that's my thing that I do now. But at the time when I first started, I would do like three eggs in the morning. That worked out great. But you're getting your healthy fats in, you're getting protein, and you need all of those things, especially to have healthy hormones. But protein is very essential with hormones. So at that time, I was definitely a stickler. And this is this was from my nutritionist, her advice. I was a stickler about getting like 100 grams of protein a day minimum because most women don't even get close to that, maybe more like 60 grams. But in order to have balanced hormones and support your energy levels. She was very adamant that I at least got a hundred. So I focused on that and it definitely made a difference in terms of just like how I felt energetically. But 
I didn't realize that for me, like having a carby breakfast or having sugar in the morning or like a sugary drink, a coffee drink or whatever, that was literally like the worst thing I could do for myself because one, you're just spiking your blood sugar. And when you spike your blood sugar, you're bound to go for a crash that's not helping you have breakfast. I know that might be hard for some of you, but at least if you can't have breakfast, try to eat like within the morning window at some point, something and get in some protein. Now this one, I honestly still have trouble with it, but when you wake up and you immediately go for your phone, baby, you are setting yourself up. You're literally your own op. I'm talking to myself. Okay. (laughs) So for a few reasons, why don't we want to pick up our phone immediately when we wake up? Because you are literally setting yourself up to have a shitty day, okay? Reason number one, if you pick up your phone and let's say you do see like a pretty shitty video on TikTok, maybe you see some racist Karen like going off in Costco. Okay, that's going to piss me off. So now I'm in a bad mood, okay? Don't do that. Why don't you have a good morning, okay? Now, the other thing that's more like just science is you are opening your eyes and immediately putting artificial blue light in your face absolutely not (laughs) that's just not it's not good the blue light first thing in the morning is said to tie to just immediately raising your cortisol levels and if you don't know what cortisol is that's your stress hormone we want to keep cortisol down especially if we're talking hormone balance cortisol is not our bestie we want to keep that managed So immediately shoving a bright ass phone in your face, even if the brightness is down, it's not what you want. The first thing your eyeballs should be seeing is the sun. Get up, go outside, let your eyeballs get a little bit of sunlight, even if it's cloudy, because we have what's called a circadian rhythm. Your circadian rhythm is kind of in charge of like your sleep, when you should be awake, when you should be tired. A lot of you can't sleep properly because you can't get off your damn phone. (laughs) Okay. And a lot of you can't sleep and you're tired all day because you're shoving a phone in your face and you're not like letting your body know, hey, it's time to wake up. We're humans. We're trained to respond to the sunlight. So if you can, just step outside. What I like to do is make some tea, go on my patio, sip some tea, and do like a five to 10 minute meditation on my patio and just get some sunlight on my eyeballs. Take off your sunglasses too. Yes, yes. It's so simple and it's nice. It's like nice to start your morning that way. But once the sun has seen your eyes, then it's not so much of a big deal when you do the screen thing. But speaking of sleep, your quality of sleep is obviously a huge component in how you feel and just making you feel more balanced, energized and everything. So not only should you be trying to get sleep, but you should be trying to improve your sleep quality. There are things that you can do before bed to have better sleep. There are things that you can eat to have better sleep. Something that I learned from my nutritionist is that carbs before bed is really good for sleep. So if you can have a cup of rice or sweet potato with your dinner, do that. Whoever told you carbs are bad, not true. (laughs) Eat carbs, please eat carbs carbs. They're good carbs, right? I'm not saying go have like a bunch of sugar before bed. It's probably not going to help you out, but apparently your sleep is better and I found it to work for me. So I don't know, just maybe try it out. Add a cup of rice to your dinner. So a lot of you guys like to work out and I highly recommend, especially when you're trying to heal and balance your hormones, moving your body is so essential. So I love working out, but something that I was making the mistake with was the high intensity workouts just all month. I said earlier, we are cyclical beings, meaning every week as a woman is different. So you have your follicular phase, follicular, (laughs) follicular, then you have ovulation, then you have luteal, then you have menstrual. Okay, follicular, we're feeling fantastic, ready to rock. If you want to do a high intensity workout, do that. If you want to burpee your way around the world, do that. That's the week to do it. Okay, then when we get into ovulation, still, it's a vibe. If you have the energy, go with it. But when you start getting to the luteal phase, now just pay attention to your body. How are you feeling? A lot of us start PMSing around this time and we become a different person. We're a little sleepy, maybe a little tired. Everyone's different. But for me, my energy level usually tanks. I'm not burping my way around the world. 
No. In general, I prefer slow and controlled workouts. I've just found my my physique really responds to that. I can actually see like the changes in my body when I'm not doing high intensity workouts because I'm not as inflamed. Again, the high intensity workouts go back to cortisol. So if you're doing a high intensity workout around your period or even your luteal phase, it might stress your body out. So there's something called cycle syncing that you might have seen where people will eat certain foods and do certain workouts depending on the week of their cycle. Highly recommend recommend looking into that. It'll just make you feel better. You won't feel like shit all the time. And especially if you are having hormone issues, you will feel such a difference if you start changing your workouts to match your cycle. You don't want to stress yourself out. You don't want to like do a workout and have no energy for the rest of the day. You can still lift weights. You can still do those things, but you can do them at a slow controlled pace where you're not like hurting yourself. Okay. So low intensity workouts or just slow and controlled workouts it'll do you wonders caffeine on an empty stomach we can't do it anymore i mean i honestly love doing caffeine on an empty stomach i'm not even gonna lie to you because i feel like so stressed out and i feel like i can conquer the world but it's like stressed out in a good way (laughs) but no you shouldn't be doing that again going back to like the breakfast thing you need to have food with your caffeine just period one you know, sometimes when you have caffeine on an empty stomach, you're not even hungry because your stress hormones go up (laughs) because your cortisol goes up. So you still need to eat, but some people don't want to have food with their caffeine and say, I just don't like breakfast. Well, if you would stop having caffeine on an empty stomach, you might actually feel hungry. Maybe. More importantly, caffeine on an empty stomach is not supporting your hormones. Not at all. You can have caffeine in moderation, but if you're trying to balance your hormones, maybe reconsider. So this one, you guys are probably going to get mad about this one but like if you're serious about your hormones like it is what it is listen i love a fizzy drink that's what i call sodas i love it but if you're doing all these artificial sweeteners and chemicals you think that's good for your hormones it's not it's not even if it's not sugar yes can you pronounce every ingredient in what you're eating if the answer is no it's probably not going to be supporting your hormones you're probably putting something weird in your body less is more when i say less is more i just mean less complicated ingredients Can you pronounce what you're eating? Probably a good sign. Go with those things. Go with those foods. And naturally, you'll kind of find out you got to stick to whole foods. You'll feel better with whole foods. But I've just found, yeah, when you're putting all this weird shit in your body that you don't even understand what you're eating or drinking, you can't pronounce the ingredients. you might feel a little off still. It's really about making choices that are going to get you to where you want to be quicker. You can obviously support your hormones by having the things you want. It just might take you a longer time to heal and in balance. So my thing is, if you could just get there quicker, like why not cut that shit out? There are other things you can have that are yummy. Seriously. All right. This one's tough, especially when you feel like shit and your hormones are just not the vibe. But if you have a negative mindset, you, I just saw a video about this. The person and said you can negatively think yourself into a hormone imbalance and I could not agree with that more especially for myself that was so true I just got more and more frustrated with where I was and less optimistic and in turn I found myself spiraling into an even more negative mindset every single day every day your mind and your body and your spirit are all one thing that's why it's mind body spirit whatever it supports each other so if you have bad ideas and thoughts going on up here it's going to reflect in your body it's going to reflect in your habits get your mind right how do i get my mind right bria well if i knew the secret sauce to that well i probably wouldn't have a youtube channel but i can tell you a few things that might help you out seek help seek a professional i'm just gonna keep it real with you therapy is amazing once you find the right therapist it's incredible start there okay like i said i think the mind body and spirit are very intertwined when it comes to our health and sometimes a hormone imbalance could be a reflection of emotional distress mental distress maybe you do need to clear what's going on up here you need to talk something out with a professional maybe you need to journal you need to get things out of your head you need to get it on paper maybe you need to talk to your friends more communicate be honest use your voice a little bit more speak up for yourself stand on business there are things you need to do to protect your health on all levels mental physical emotional spiritual all of it it's all intertwined right when you have a negative mindset you're gonna see it you're gonna see it in your face you're gonna see it on your body you're gonna feel it 
And it's hard because at first you feel like an imposter. Like when I was really down bad, I knew that my mindset was so important, but man, it was hard. Every day I was like, I'm lying to myself. And I felt like I I really was lying to myself. But every day I got closer and closer to believing the lie, the healthy lie. And that was that this was temporary. I'm on the right track. I'm making progress. It's taking a while, but I'm getting there because I'm not taking the shortcut of just getting on birth control. And I'm not shaming anybody that chooses to do that but when that's the thing that they're offering me when I know I have a hormone imbalance that wasn't working for me and it was this vicious cycle that I was going on so I made the choice to do the harder thing and it sucked it fucking sucked and it messed with my head and it made me feel like things were never going to get better but I had to do things like meditate I had to go to therapy I had to talk to people I had to journal I had to talk to you guys and over time it worked I felt better I felt more like Bria and I got back to feeling like myself and getting my little sparkle back. I know we love to kiki and drink, but when it comes to hormone balance, I will say this, just cut the alcohol for a little bit. Cut, just cut it. Alcohol is doing not a goddamn thing for you. There is no health benefit to alcohol. I'm sorry to tell you. Yes, it can be fun sometimes, but you know what? There are just other ways to have fun, truly. And I'm a huge proponent of just encouraging people to find alternative ways of having fun or just being present in the moment. I definitely am down for a drink here and there, don't get me wrong, but when you're trying to heal your body, alcohol is not doing a damn thing for you. Not not one thing. So get your health back on track and you know, the alcohol will be there. It'll be there. I'm not saying give it up. I'm just saying it ain't helping. And it's hard because I know we wanna drink, we wanna go out, nobody likes being the sober one, but this is a great time to really lean into sobriety and mocktails and everything. It's all the rage, all the cool kids are doing it. Uh, and honestly, like speaking from my experience, no one, no one should really care if you're drinking or not. If your friends are like, oh, you're being, like like get new friends that's are we are we five not five are we like 15 okay stop grow up have some orange juice you can still have fun without alcohol honestly and I figured that out for myself finally there were times where I was like oh my god I don't want to be the only one sober like I get it I get it but the feeling of waking up and being productive the next day it's it's unmatched for me when my hormones were really bad like I had a really bad response to alcohol it was like my body knew like girl what are you doing right now I would be so depressed the next day the anxiety was like off the charts and I was already anxious like without alcohol so like why would it help you know (laughs) I mean I guess some people are less anxious with alcohol but like when your hormones are fucked up like I don't know drinking put me in such a bad situation for like the next three days even if I only had like two drinks I would feel anxiety off the charts for three days after that because my hormones were just a wreck so just give it up but anyways guys these were the main things that were my hormone disruptors that I was doing like unintentionally disrupting hormone balance in my own life because I really just didn't know that they had such an impact in my opinion these are just like little small tweaks that you can make that will make a huge difference while you're on your journey to hormone balance and one thing I will never gatekeep with you guys is anything health related because I kid you not and I'm not saying this like to be any kind of way but to go to a naturopathic doctor I spent monties so I'm hoping that the money I spent can work for all of us I just know it's not realistic for everybody to be able to afford the right kind of health care where you're actually getting health care and they care about you <laughs> It's unfortunately just not how things are today. But any information I get, I'm going to tell y'all. I'm going to tell y'all what my my naturopathic doctor said. Those visits, you guys, they're like $300 a visit. I mean, it's so sad, but like insurance won't cover them. And it it makes you wonder, like, why won't insurance cover naturopathic visits? They really don't want you to get answers. (laughs) They won't keep you in this little cycle. They want big pharma needs you. But listen, I'm a, I'm a fight book, okay? I'm gonna give you guys the tea. And I really recommend like us leaning into a community when it comes to our health, especially if you are a woman and you have hormones. We need to be leaning on each other. Women are amazing and strong and we're not gonna be bogged down by a system that just doesn't care. A lot of you know, I was diagnosed with PMDD. Y'all, I don't even have those symptoms anymore because I've changed my lifestyle. In turn, it accidentally helped that. I wasn't even worried about the PMDD. I was just trying to feel better. What I'm saying is there are answers to these things and they make us feel like sometimes there aren't solutions or answers. And it makes me sad because I think with women's health, we can be swept under the rug. There's no reason. When I was diagnosed with PMDD and I went to other doctors, they were like, PM what? 
I'm sorry, this is literally like a disorder and you I'm explaining it to you. That kind of scared me. But again, it's a woman's issue. So it's not at the top of the priority here. But God forbid a guy can't get a boner. We're going to have all the medication so he can get it up. Let's be real. Clap if you're real. All right, guys, I hope this is helpful. And if you don't mind, I would love to know in the comments if you guys have had your hormones tested. If you have, was it helpful? Did you get the information you were looking for? Were you able to take steps? Like, give me all the tea. I'm just curious out of the people who watch this video, how many of you have been given that information? I think it's very telling to if it's accessible or not. But I would just like to know that from your perspective. But thanks, guys, for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, like comment share subscribe it really helps the podcast grow and it's just like a free way you can support us i really appreciate it and as per usual i'll see you next week